with Karen and Chesley, and Chesley's all ready to go. Oh, you just can't believe what's happened, Denise, since the last time you saw me. You know something? They split my head open. Split your head open? Chesley, you make it sound like we really uh, hurt you. We was, oh, you did, you split my head open. And was there termites in there? No, there was no termites, but what the whole deal was, see, every now and then, we have to check your strings. But to make sure I'm still connected, we gotta make sure you're still connected so that when I pull the strings, then it's in the mouth news, in the eyes news. Yeah, and we, we like for people to know that, you know, you're in good working condition. So where some people do sound checks, you know, we do string checks. Yeah, we gotta check your strings there. Well, let's see what we can do here. If we can find, make sure all these strings work today. Well, there, your eyebrows move. They need to be moving a little better. And, but you're, uh, you can wink. <laughs> and I can talk, and that's what matters. But there, there was no termites? There was no termites, Chesley. Well, you know what, what the, the termite was hiding? The termite was hiding. I, I tell you what, we was all in, in that trunk. We checked everything. And when we, and when you sit in the head open, when we, you say we split your head open, you know, you're put together with screws, Chesley. We weren't really being vicious to you, but... We didn't find any termites at all, so I really don't think you have any termites. I think it's just your stall job. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to go to the end. Then I think there's a Texas termite. No, there's not a Texas termite in there. We would have seen him. Now, Chesley, we need to tell our Bible story today. But I want you to then to know that you slit in a hit of Oh, Chesley, I didn't hurt you, and George didn't hurt you. And where is George towards you? He always runs when we go to tell our story. Well, he's got the dogs, and he knows the dogs won't be quiet. So they go outside until our story time is done. Well, Chesley, what's our story? Who's it going to be about today? It's going to be about a man named Samson. Samson. Many people say he was a really a strong man. But the truth was, he only was strong when the Lord needed him to do, perform some miracle that required strength. And, and so, but tell me, how did, how did it all come down? How did it all come about? Well, I tell you what. Uh, Israel, they was bad to disobey God. And why would they do that? Because it's going to get them into trouble. Every time it gets them into trouble, God wants to bless them and help them. But they would want to go their own way. And get you in trouble, it'll get you in trouble. And it did every time. Well, after years and years, well, they were just begging for help because the Philistines, their enemy, was they really being mean to them. Oh, they were being cruel to them. It was a very dangerous time. And they thought, if we just had some help. And so, oh, what did they do? Did they uh, write to the president? Well, no, one write to the president. <coughs> Pardon me, I have a cold, so we'll have a little problem, perhaps. But anyway, uh, the, what they, people did, they called out on God. And so they knew what to do. They knew what to do and where to go. It was almost as though they just used God. You know, when he's in trouble, when they was in trouble, they call him. Otherwise, they, he felt like they didn't really need him. But they did. You know, as they called out, God had mercy. And that means he cared. He cared for them, and he didn't want them to suffer. And other generations that were going to come, he wanted to know about God because he has a family plan. He wants everybody to know about him. The parents and the children just keep spreading the good news. So God chose this man and this woman that they would give birth to a son, and they named him Samson. You know what was special then? Well, he was special because one thing, God chose him. He wanted to use him. And so this man was to be, he grew up, he was going to be the deliverer from these wicked enemies. You know, the Philistines, the mean ones. Yeah, the mean ones. So what happened? The parents were so concerned, and they, were, they just worshipped the Lord and praised him. And they said, Lord, help us. We want to know exactly how to raise this boy. You know, I think it's important for parents to do that. They, they need to ask God. Yeah, they need to ask God. And so they have made sure, and they said, come tell us again. I believe they wrote everything down so they each knew exactly what God wanted done. This boy was to be what was called a Nazarite. And, and, and what is one of them? Well, they're totally dedicated to God. God had a special plan for them. And one of the things was they could never cut their hair. Oh, I guess they look kind of weird. Well, I don't tell you, it was just a vow that they made. They didn't maybe look like everybody else, but this was the plan that God had for them. Well, and, and so then what happened? And what about this kid? Well, this kid, this young man, when he grew up, the Bible says, you know, God loved him, and God blessed him. Did he do like his parents did? Unfortunately, he didn't have that same regard and respect and love for God that his parents did. And was he with you? Well, what he was almost, what we'd call almost like just a, it was like a joke to him. He wouldn't really live for God. It was his parents' fault. Well, it wasn't the parents' fault. They had taught and trained and explained to him, you are special. Not that you're 
doesn't mean that nobody else God cares about. He cares for everybody. But he has a special plan for you to deliver these people. And so he, did he get serious? He did not get serious. Well, when it come a time of need and he got in trouble, well, he would call out to God. And that's not right to do that. But he did call out to God. And the people would be in great need. Remember, God had chosen him. And it was up to him to do right. It was up to him to straighten up and do the right thing. What happened, though? God would have mercy on him and the people that were in need, and they call for help. And, and Samson's the man. Samson's the man. So Samson would realize he really he couldn't do it by himself. He knew he wasn't strong. Uh, was he a muscle builder? No, he wasn't a muscle builder. I think he looked like just any other man. He was just the average size. But when God came on him and anointed him, and suddenly he had strength, like it was unbelievable. You know what he would do? He would just, what would he do? Uh, uh, just, uh, just tear things up? Well, whatever the need was, like one time a lion came out to get, oh, lion, lion, oh, oh I don't, is he a lion tamer? No, he wasn't a lion tamer, but God gave him the strength to literally just tear, just tear that lion apart. That was really a miracle. You know, I think it is. We're going to worship him? We better not worship him. We don't worship Samson. But Samson knew God had helped him. And you would think that he would have thought, oh, I want to worship God now. But instead, he'd go right back to being with people that were a very bad influence on him. And he didn't influence them. Instead of him influencing them and saying, let me tell you about God. My parents have told me about God. I want to tell you about God and his greatness. Instead, he said, I want to do the sinning like you're doing. Oh, and that got things in trouble. Did God still use him? God had chosen him, and he still used him, but he wasn't pleased with him. And the parents would try to tell, talk to Samson. Did he listen to him? No, he did. He just did his own thing. Well, time went by on, and again, there'd be danger. The people would be in danger. The enemy, the Philistines, would come. <laughs> and then they needed Samson. He was the man. But Samson, you know, he wasn't really tuned in, but they'd get him, Samson, you're the one. You're, you're God's man. You, we know you're, you're, my, you're God's man. You've got to help us. And did he call out to God? Well, that's what he would do when he was in trouble. Lord, I can't do this by myself. And he would say, please help. Lord, we've got danger. and We're all in danger. And the Lord would help him. The Bible said he'd shake himself. He would shake himself. And I, I really, maybe on the outside he did, but also inside he said, I'm sorry, Lord, please help me. And he would call out to God. And then all of a sudden, he, he, he'd just get strength. Like the other hand, he was just, well, he was a strong man. He was the strongest thing. He was just the miraculous things that he would do. One time, he even took a jawbone, the jawbone, ooh, uh -huh, of, a, of a donkey. When the enemy had come after him, he had been sinning. Now he prayed, and he saw, he saw a jawbone over there and of a donkey, and he grabbed it up. And what's he going to do with that? Well, he killed a thousand of the enemy, the Philistine soldiers. I don't know how he could do that because God helped him. Well, he knew I didn't do this by myself. He knew that God helped him. He knew God alone was his strength. But he still wouldn't live for God like he should have. He should have been a good example. And you know, let's stop right here and say that God has a plan for every life of every single boy and girl that's listening now. And all the other people. And people maybe have, maybe say have done wrong in their life and they realize they've done wrong. God still has a plan. He always does. And look, and they do. We may not all be leaders as far as leading a nation, but maybe a postman. You might be a military person, you might be a plumber, you might be a nurse, just all kinds of jobs, carpenters or whatever. And so God, God can use anyone, any to just yield to him, and he can help us to be a blessing wherever we are. Well, you know, this, this man, Samson, he realized what a... Finally, it was really a bad thing when he had, he had been so wicked and he gave away his secrets, the, the secrets of being a Nazarite, where his strength was. And why did he do that? Well, he got, remember, he was having bad influence. He was going with people that didn't love God. They were the enemy. They were idolatrous. And he would start just telling them. Because they wanted to know, they, yeah, they wanted to know, how, how is it that you do this? When you're just like us, and then all of a sudden, when you get in trouble, all of a sudden, what is it happens to you? You know, and he, he, well, he told secrets. He shouldn't have told the secrets. And it got down till he finally told every detail. You know what the last thing was? You know, I don't know. That is hair. He finally said hair. And they thought, hair? Having your long hair? Did we cut your hair? You mean you'll be weak? Just so you're going to be able to be able to do those miracles and be used of God? He had to tell him, that's right. And so, you know what, I think he is silly for doing that. He should not have done it. 
what happened every time, time and again, they would try to get him to do things, and then they would try to trap him. Well, this the Spirit of the Lord would come on him, and he wanted to do this because he would call out to God. He thought he was getting by with that. But you know what? After he told the whole thing about his hair, they cut his hair. And then that woman said to him, Oh, Samson, the Philistines are here. They're on you. Oh, you know what he did? I think I think he did. And he jumped up and he turned. He jumped up and he prayed and he said, Well, it's be just like it always. I'm just going to... I'm just going to shake myself and Lord deliver me. And, 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 and he did. No, he didn't. You know, one of the saddest scriptures in the Bible said he didn't even know when the spirit, this anointing of God had left him. Oh, he just didn't take things serious and he just knocked God. He would mock God. It was almost as if he didn't care. You know what they did to him? I think they cut his hair. Well, they had cut his hair, and they took him and put him in prison. Oh, and now he can't get out because he has no power. God wasn't helping him now. God got this man in a place, or actually he got himself in this place, to where he was totally helpless. Is he just done for? He wasn't just done for because God is merciful. But first, Samson had to call on God. He did. He called out. Oh, he just felt awful. I done wrong. I believe he was crying out as he there was grinding in the prison. He was having to grind the gang, a grain like he was a an animal. And he was he's began to call out, I've done wrong. Lord, if you'll just please help me here, please. Lord, I was wrong. And, and did God hear him? God did hear him. His hair began to grow. And the day came that they brought Samson out. They laughed at him. They mocked him because he had no power, and they thought he was just a joke. He was just a joke. And they brought him out, and they laughed and made fun of him, and they said, look at the strong man. Look at him now. And he was just a weakling. That's what they thought. But this man had called out to God and in a miraculous way. God helped him that day. They said, let's bring him out here so we can all laugh at him and make fun of him and watch him. Big old crowd there, about 3,000 people. You know, what's he going to do? Well, they just led him around and mocked him, laughed at him, let everybody see him. Here's this great strong man, they said. And he was, and he was just weak because he was powerless without the Lord. But they don't know he's been praying. He's been seeking God. And he said to the boy that was helping him, because he was blind, remember, they had to lead him. And he put his hands around those big old pillars. And what did he do then? Did he... Well, what did he do? Was he just resting? No, he wasn't resting. He said, Lord, would you please just one last time, could I have your anointing on my life? And these people are in bondage here. And here's all these Philistines. And because of the way I've lived, they're making fun and they're laughing. And he said, please, I'm a blind man now. They've punched out my eyes and here I am, powerless. It's just miserable, Lord. We need you. We have to have you. And he wrapped his arms around those big old, big old pillars in the what happened. He said, Lord, just please anoint me one more time. And, and so he did. And, and then what? Did you know what? He literally brought the house down. Did you know that that house just fell? It collapsed. You know, in what happened to him? He died too, but there was all this enemy was destroyed that day. It brought a victory to those people. Did you know what? It didn't have to be like that for him, did it? It did not have to be like that for him. You know what it says to me? That we all have a choice to make. This boy had it made. He had parents that taught and trained, but he didn't follow through. God has a plan for each life. And how do we know it? As we walk with him and, and live for the Lord, we study, we pray, read the Bible. We'll know the plan. That's just the way. The longer you're around somebody you love, you know their plan. And that's it is. What is with God? They had a plan. But right now, I have a plan for you. And what is that plan? <coughs> well, you're hacking. Well, I know I've got a cold. But what we're going to do, and my plan for you, is to put you to bed. And I am not sleepy. You're the one that's sick, not me. Chesley, you need to go to bed now. Well, I need to uh, take care of you. No, Chesley, I can take care of me. But I'm going to put you to bed. You tell everybody goodbye, and you're ready to go to bed. I am not ready to go to bed. Then I have to go to bed. I love you all. I don't want to go to bed. Good day. Uh, Chesley, we can be nice about this. If you was being stuffed in your trunk, would you be nice? Well, I don't know, Chesley, but let's just say we'll see you next Sunday. You have a great week. And
remember, read your Bible, pray every day, and live the life that would please the Lord.